It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us back on the show is Jesse Romero, here to talk about the upcoming Rekindle the Fire Men's Conference. Thanks for being here, Jesse. Thank you, Kyle, for inviting. At last time you were on, you talked about your experience with uh, people dealing with the demonic, with the occult, and, and in the prisons. It was a fascinating episode. If people didn't hear that, you got to go back and listen to it. It's ended up being one of our most popular episodes, especially on YouTube. It's been getting passed around a lot. So a uh, fascinating story. And you're coming to town for the Rekindle the Fire Men's Conference on February 22nd. Talk to our men. And I was kind of curious, who is a man that has had an impact on your faith? The man that's had an impact on my faith, I would say, are two. First, somebody who's not here and somebody who was here in, in my life. St. Joseph. Hmm. When you look at the life of St. Joseph, he exemplifies everything that's inspired me to holiness and to being a man that wants to protect, uh, to lead, and provide for his family. I think St. Joseph, in fact, there's a title that we give St. Joseph. He's called St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. It's an old title that we right. give him. And in my morning prayers, my evening prayers, I'm always saying St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. Hmm. You know, he didn't talk much. He didn't have much to say. But boy, oh boy, when it came time uh, to defending the Holy Family, he could be counted on. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to defend our families. Uh, whatever it takes, spiritually, physically, and also St. Joseph, his relationship with God was so pure that angels used to come and talk to him. Right. And so that's another thing that fascinates me, just how cavalier the angels would come and just give him messages. And I mean, you know, I'm in my late 50s here, and angels never talk to me, so far as I know, audibly, <laughs> like St. Joseph. So it goes to show you yeah. how important he really was. Now, if we're talking about somebody here on Earth, in my life, that's had an effect on me in my lifetime. It was my father. Hmm. I'll tell you, my father did something that just radically changed my way of looking at everything. Here's what happened. I was, uh, yeah, 10 years old. So this was 1970. Uh, we came out of mass one day. We went, went, went to mass every single Sunday, sat on the front pew, my mom, uh, my dad, my four brothers, and my sister. And I remember my dad had just won a lottery ticket there at the parish carnival and i think we've got like a free gift to a high you know high price restaurant uh -huh. and we've never been to a restaurant i mean with a, my, dad, my mom and dad had a bunch of kids we never but you know mcdonald's and jack in the box was maybe you know twice a year or something like that right so we got this uh coupon to a high price restaurant we go there uh we have an, an afternoon meal a dinner meal we're excited i mean you know seeing waiters and people tending to us. We've never seen something like this, you know, low flowing candles and everybody has their own booth. So I remember when we were leaving the restaurant, we walked out through the back door, which led to an alley, which was a shortcut to the parking lot. As we walked out the restaurant, I'm nine, 10 years old, but I still know what a crime is. As we walk out, we see a man and a lady in a vehicle, I could see that the man is attacking this woman. And I can see, I'm saying, this is wrong. All these other guys were walking out of the restaurant and I'm saying, okay, okay, you, you know, do something, you got help her, help her, do something. I'm looking at all these guys walking out. They would grab their wives or their girlfriends and they would run left or right down the alley to the parking lot away from the crime. They wanted nothing to do with it. I looked at my dad and I'm like, Dad, Dad, what are we going to do? My dad took off his tie, took off his top coat, told my mom, take the kids back inside the restaurant. This was pre-cell phone days. I call 911, call the police, tell them there's a crime in progress and, and uh, tell them that I'm going to try to stop it. My mom ran inside the restaurant. The rest of the boys, we, we go, we're not going with mom. We're staying here with dad. You know, we're all little guys, but still. I stood there and, and I wanted to do something. There was something inside of me. I want to help out my dad, but I'm a nine-year-old kid with, you know, spaghetti arms. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I have more, more, more heart than anything else. I saw my dad run to the car, open the back door, jump on this guy. And my dad's not letting go. He, this guy's way bigger than my dad. We can hear the police pull up uh, the, the sirens. We can hear them wailing. They get there. They surround my dad and this guy on the floor. 
The police come out with, with their guns because they basically got called. There was a crime in progress. This lady runs out to the police and she says, officers, officers, that man right there saved my life. He saved my life. They separated them. They took the guy in custody. They took care of the victim. They ran a once and warrants on the guy. The police came up to my mom and dad and were there, were listening. And they said, Mr. Romero, we want to thank you. Uh, we just did a wants and warrants on this guy. This guy's a serial rapist in Southern California. And uh, we've been looking for him for at least seven years. Hmm. We want to congratulate you. This guy's on the LAPD most wanted list. Wow. Um, so I remember I saw that. We drove home and I asked my dad, hey, dad, were you scared? This guy was a lot bigger than you. He was young. He was and then my dad just you know, told the four boys in the back seat, and he says, no, I was not scared. He goes, I had Jesus. <laughs> so I'm nine years old. I'm saying, what? You had Jesus? He goes, yeah. He goes, why would I be scared? He didn't have Jesus. I did. Remember, we just came for mass. I went to communion. He says, I was ready for something like this. I knew Jesus would protect me. So I was nine years old watching that. And hearing my father's words had a profound change on my life forever. Do you think there's a connection between describing these men that were walking away from doing the right thing and protecting somebody that's being attacked? And then we see men not participating in the faith, not or even if they're going to mass, maybe not participating in the mass. Fear is one of the 11 emotions that we have according to the catechism of the Catholic Church. There's a section on, on emotions and passions. Fear is one of the 11 emo emotions that every human being has, according to St. Thomas Aquinas in the Catechism. Mm -hmm. Fear is something that petrifies people. Well, what's the only thing that combats fear? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas says that faith is the, the enemy of fear. My dad was a practicing Catholic, going to Mass every Sunday. In fact, he was part of the Legion of Mary. I remember he'd go every Thursday. Him and mom, my mom, they led the Legion of Mary in the Southern California chapter. And so all I could say is that my dad's fear was basically, it was tempered by sanctifying grace, by a life of prayer, by a life of the sacraments, by a life of faith. I'm sure my dad was a little bit afraid, but the fact is it was tempered. Uh, it was controlled because he's a man of faith versus a secular humanist that has no life of faith, that has no sanctifying grace, that has no prayer life. As the catechism says, this just overruns their passions. This just controls them. This is petrifies them. And so all I could say is I'm just spent in my mind. I'm thinking most of those guys that were walking out of the restaurant, if not all of them, they were probably secular humanists, you know, moral relativists. My dad was a man of faith and uh, it was the Holy Spirit that triggered in my dad's heart uh, to take action. Because remember, fortitude is one of the gifts that we receive at confirmation. Fortitude, which is another word of saying courage. Mm -hmm. Do you think that prayer is different for men and women? Yes, absolutely different. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. For example, women love being told that they're the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's a spouse of Christ. And, you know, things like you tell a woman, hey, when you pray the rosary, you know, the Franciscan said that Franciscan spirituality, that a rose bud comes out of your mouth with every Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Now, what I just said right now, that doesn't connect at all with men. You tell the average guy, hey, do you need to start praying the rosary? Because don't you know that a, a rosebud comes out of your mouth when you say every Hail Mary? <laughs> right. That's not going to connect with one man on planet Earth. <laughs> and if you tell a guy, dude, you know that you're the bride of Christ? Right. See, that's not going to connect with men. Men, you got to speak to them a, a different language. I have a rosary men's group every two weeks at my parish, just for the local guys. I get about 60 to 80 guys every two weeks praying the rosary. And I tell them, you know, I, the way I tell them, I said, when, when they walk in the church for the rosary, I said, hey, you got your weapon? Lock. I said, take it out, uh, lock and load it. <laughs> they like that language. And I say, remember, we're soldiers of Christ, and every Hail Mary that comes out of your mouth, I said, you guys are firing a silver bullet against the kingdom of darkness. So just remember that. Okay, it's coming out of your mouth, and it's to protect your family, to protect yourself, and to protect the church. See, that language connects with guys. That's why I have 80 guys showing up every two weeks to pray the rosary at a parish. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, how else we do the, the rosary. And these guys come out for this torture. I said, unless you got bad knees. I said, we're doing our, the rosary on our knees, okay, period. 
Also for the Hail Marys, we do what's called a penitential rosary. During the Hail Marys, I say, arms up, cruciform. So for the 10 Hail Marys, you've got 80 guys in a baritone voice uh, saying Hail Mary with their arms cruciform. By the time you're like in your seventh or eighth Hail Mary, your arms are shaking and your shoulders are burning. And boy, oh boy, you can't wait till you reach the 10th Hail Mary so you can drop in at the glory be and rest for the next Hail Mary at the next. So, and I tell them, I tell them, this is meant to put pain on your knees and with your arms up, cruciform for the Hail Marys. I said, guys, we need to feel pain in our body. I said, because this pain, I said, we got to offer it for the church. There's a lot of bad things going on in our church. There's a lot of bad people in our church, Mm -hmm. bad people in our family. We have to make reparation for our own sins. So I, you know, every two weeks, 80 guys from my parish come and get tortured uh, with a rosary and they love it. And we do the rosary slow. And then we do the litanies of, of Loretto after again, why is it that they come out there? I use language that guys love. And then when you got 80 guys uh, praying the rosary in a baritone voice, and then I'm giving the theology of the mysteries in between, uh, again, there's a different language for men than there is for women. All right. Well, if you want to hear more from Jesse, check out the Rekindle the Fire Men's Conference. It's February 22nd, and you can find more information at rekindlethefire.net. Also, if you missed it, check out episode 733 of this show. You talked about your book, The Devil in the City of Angels, which people can check out, not only the podcast, but check out the book as well. And your website is jesseromero.com. And again, check out the Rekindle the Fire Men's Conference, February 22nd. Find information at rekindlethefire.net. Thank you so much, Jesse. Appreciate it. You got it, partner. Thank you. God bless you.